Aloha, everyone. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe. Boy, do I have an interesting program today. My guest is Richard Vareka, the Dean of Political Reporters, Commentators in the state of Hawaii, and he's been involved in covering our political scene for years, generations maybe. And well, guess what, folks? I am so excited. I couldn't sleep last night. I, I, I woke up because for the first time in my life, I get to interview Richard. You got to understand, this guy has interviewed me a thousand times. Well, ran me down. Well, talk about flipping the script. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, this, and it's a first for me. I mean, really? I've, I've certainly never been I'm your first governor that interviewed you. That's yet. right. Thank That's you. That's right. Thank you. None Thank you very much. I appreciate that. it. Well, I've been uh, thinking about it. Well, first of all, tell us when you started covering politics in Hawaii. Well, it would, it would be uh, started as an intern at the Star Bulletin when it was the Star Bulletin in 1971 uh, and worked my way uh, through 75 and then took a year off and then went uh, to work at KHVH News Radio for three years. And from there, um, I went to Channel 2 and worked at uh, Channel 2 KHON for years. seven years. That's right, 50, that's right. 50 years That's you've right. been covering. So tell, you know, what, how has Jack politics Jack Burns changed? was the first governor I interviewed. Really? Yeah. Oh, what a legend. Uh, You've you yeah. got to write a book, Richard. That's another <laughs> subject. You know, you really should. Um, okay, tell us, uh, has, has politics changed in any it's, way? It's, it, it's changed in, in a hundred ways, and in a hundred ways it hasn't changed. Okay. Um, my fault in covering politics is that I actually appreciate politicians and uh, what they do and can sympathize with what they do. So the human, human part of covering politics and the people part has not changed. It right. still so much of the time comes down to the decisions that are made by people in committee rooms or people who have different uh, forces pushing and tugging on them one way or the other. Um, what has changed, obviously, is the Internet has changed everything. Really? The, the, the degree of communications and how much more sophisticated a, a politician or a community leader has to be to be able to communicate you, with different people. We're talking about social media? The social media uh, and uh, deciding your, your audience Pretty, when you started in politics, you knew who your audience right, was. Right. When you were, you didn't need polls. Right. You could look them in the in the eye, and you knew who you were right, appealing your neighbors. to. They were the right. people next yeah. door. You yeah. knew who you represented. Now with social media, everything you go is flung out worldwide, and then from there, you have to figure out yourself how you narrow things down. So well, it's a different kind of well, issue. Well, Richard, you know, you, you mentioned that you were um, always cognizant of the human element. But I just want to be clear that, you know, that didn't influence the, the objectiveness of, you, of your stories. And one of the things that I know I appreciated was the fact that uh, you, you, you wouldn't do this uh, interview one and interview another thing. You know, just you actually went out and got stories. And that, I thought that was pretty interesting. I, I always appreciate doing that. Just to, you know, even as I uh, do my column now for the Star Advertiser, there is still um, a great deal of, of calling people up and asking them what they think. And, and uh, I get to do a lot more research-based reporting now, but also you still have to go talk to people and get, and get their feelings uh, into your into Well, that's your work. A, you know, that you, you're opening up a whole bunch of doors here, mm -hmm. and I, I just want to jump through it. But sure. first of all, in terms of uh, these 50 years, uh, who were some of the more interesting characters you, you got to write about or cover? I mean, obviously Jack Burns is a legend in Hawaii. Uh, I think that, you know, uh, I was a total cub reporter covering uh, Jack Burns at, at the Capitol. Uh, I do remember uh, one uh, event he had at the state capitol in the atrium there and there was a platform set up and there may, must have been like a hundred people out in front for whatever the presentation was and never once did he look at the audience he spent all <laughs> of his time looking at the people up on the dais and talking and talking story with them and it was sort of like he's not campaigning for votes 
He's yeah. just going to be Jack Burns the whole way. Uh, so there was that, that kind of a thing. It was a different... But I also remember a time when Frank Fossey, the great mayor of the city yes. county of Honolulu, yes. banned you yes. from, I was, uh, yes. from uh, talking I to was him. Out, I was out uh, for a while. In fact, we went to federal court. And the result of that, the Star Bulletin sued uh, y the yes, mayor. Yes, did. And Bereka V. Fossey is uh, case law as far as uh, reporters have now a right to go to a news conference. If, some, if someone, if a public official calls a uh, news conference, you can't ban a reporter from that news So you conference. can't do what yeah. Donald Trump does, which is... You, you well, know. it may be questionable <laughs> because he's not a public official. Oh, yeah, that, good, that, good, that, good. That may, be, that may be the thing, but if, it, if the mayor or the governor says, Everyone can go in except for that, that reporter over there. You can't do that. And there's a uh, federal law on that, or a federal precedent well, you, on that. You, you know, I thought it was funny because I, I was working for Frank Fossey about that time. Mo was that Model Cities? Model or? Cities, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you were covering, and, and you were, I mean, it was famous. You know? Well, I was, <laughs> you got, I was just a kid then. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about covering the interesting politicians, yesterday yes. millions of people watched the uh, the debate, the Clinton-Trump debate, and I, I could. Uh, one of the things I, 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 I hope you watched it. Yes, is, I'm assuming yes. you watched it. Yes. And um, w you know, how would you compare that debate to prior ones? I mean, even like Lincoln uh, well, I Douglas. Think, and, well, I don't. Uh, glad to say, I wasn't <laughs> around for that one. <laughs> but but uh, the, the okay, the, we the got that clear. <laughs> <laughs> the the thing is, is that I did think, um, and you know, anecdotally that. Uh, Clinton was, I looked to me, overprepared, had studied her notes a little bit too long, right, and was right. was not, she could have been a little looser in her... Especially with that yeah, format. Yeah, know, and that format. And uh, Donald Trump, uh, you could sort of see by the end of it, he decided he's just going to pitch away all pretenses of making a debate out of it, and he was just going to run through his specific things. But, you know... Uh, thinking about something with Hillary Clinton and being overprepared. I remember when she was first lady and she was giving an address on Kauai. Okay. And uh, we went to, went to cover her. I was at Channel 2 at the yeah, time. Yeah, this was right after the hurricane. Yes. Right, yes. right. And she had stopped, her motorcade had stopped to uh, look, at, look at some of the damage. And we get out and we hope to be able to ask her some questions. This is like, remember the tree tunnel part on Kauai? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so they had stopped there and they're looking at it because a lot of the trees had fallen down or the leaves had been stripped off of them. Anyway, her press handlers set up a rope line for me and Jan Ten Bruggen Kate and a couple of other reporters. I'm just like, this oh, is the Jan. most inoff yeah. inoffensive reporters in the world, but we still had a rope line well, pushing us away. Well, but you were famous from the Fosse incident. <laughs> <laughs> it was, so I think she, the overprotection uh, There was, was a there, tendency. Uh, yeah. There's it's been a tendency. Yeah. In fact, um, it, in, you know, one of the things that I think is that my, my tenure as governor, mm -hmm. and uh, which sort of coincides a little bit with the Clinton tenure, right. we, we were still in the, you know, protect the information time. Yes. I mean, it seems like today, like take Donald Trump. I mean, if, mm -hmm. he, if it comes into his head, he says it. We were still in the day when it was your job to be careful about what actually said. And there were ropes and things all around. Yeah. And, and I think that you're right. I think maybe Hillary uh, might yeah. suffer from that. On Which, if you remember uh, during that same time period when uh, Clinton gave his speech in front of the, the Hilton... Uh, Hawaiian on Village. the beach, yeah, right. the speech on the beach, right? right? That was, and he talk about reversing the rope line. He worked that rope line. His speech may have been a half hour. He must have spent forty-five minutes afterwards talking story with every person who came up. And there, I think there was ten thousand people there. Well, to well you up. remember that <coughs> he was right on the beach, mm -hmm. and uh, the um, Kalahui. Yes. Milan Tresk and her gang had gotten set up right mm -hmm. in front of that and were, uh, you know, ready for action. And he came out with the idea of an apology to Native Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, <laughs> this is a different kind of guy. He just, you know. Um, but one thing that, that happened yesterday's debate 
is this, I think Donald missed a really good line when he talked about Abraham Lincoln. Because of everything else he mm -hmm. said, it just got lost. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that affected you. Think you. He could have said, you're no Abra Abraham yeah, he, Lincoln. Well, he, it, 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 it would have stuck like out yeah. more if he didn't say everything else he said yeah. doing the whole thing. Yeah. But there is a Trump phenomenon going on in America now, and, and you can oh, see it in this. How much of that do you feel is being translated to Hawaii? I mean, you know, surprisingly, it's more than uh, I had expected. I, first of all, I did not expect that he would uh, win the uh, election the, uh, right. and so overwhelmingly win in Hawaii, win the, the plebiscite uh, here in, in, in Hawaii, right. um, and then go on to take the nomination. Uh, that was Well, there's a kind of anger me. in the country, and, 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 and it's seething a little bit here as well. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so your sense is, is that it might be translating or, you know? Well, I think that, I think that political leaders now have not worked the responsiveness that they should have to issues. And when they see issues boiling up, not being able to think that you can stonewall your way through them now is a mistake. Right. And that uh, there are some people in politics who can respond to that. When you look at the, at, at, at the days of Frank Fossey, when Frank Fossey right. was, was the mayor, um, and he, he had, ran to an issue. <laughs> yes, he had an exquisite sense of timing, and he knew how to play the issues. But he also knew what was reverberating in the community to a large extent. So I, I have this thing that it may be that it's all it's all there in Hawaii as mm -hmm. in, as it is on the mainland mm -hmm. or on the continent, but <clears throat> there is no place to focus that energy into. And so we might see it come out in the. Uh, presidential race. We might have more people voting for Trump. I hope not. I'm obviously mm -hmm. a partisan mm -hmm. on that issue. But do you think that some of that might spill off to the mayor's race? I think that when, when, you, when you look at who the voters are going to be in, in, in that mayor's race, is it going to draw more Republicans or conservative voters or people who are fed up with the system out into the race? Yeah. But I think that's going to be balanced by the fact that the voter turnout, I think, is going to be phenomenally low. Okay. The first thing, the, I mean, the, the rule of thumb is that uh, negative races always, always lower the voter turnout. When you have people throwing, throwing mud at each other, there's going to be a, a part of the electorate that's going to say, why bother? Why bother to vote? Well, one of the things that <coughs> I think we both can agree that Hawaii could benefit from would be a stronger two-party system. Yes. In fact, uh, you know, I, I'm really actually glad. I had Beth Fukumoto on this uh -huh. show, and I'm really glad that she is starting to exert some kind of uh, re mm -hmm. Republican leadership. But it seemed like the Republican, uh, op the loyal opposition was even stronger back in the days of the 70s and the 80s than they, uh, they, well, they, they have in recent they years. They certainly, in the legislature, the Republicans certainly had um, uh, a, a much stronger presence there. I mean, what was the most they had? I believe it was 20, 20, 20 yeah, it was I think. Good, yeah, yeah. It was pretty good, yeah. In the House. So they did have that kind of a thing. And for the Republicans, you know, unfortunately for the Republicans, what happened was that Linda Lingle was unable to capitalize on her strength as the governor for two terms, and she was not able to do any party building from that position she, didn't take, she really didn't take advantage of no. it. And, well, uh, I think we're going to take a break right about now, but when we come back, one of the questions uh, for you is going to be whether Donald Trump might add a spark uh, to the Republican uh, dynamic in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So right now we're going to be taking a short break. You can call us and ask Richard your questions directly at 415 871 2474. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Big Tech Hoi. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I serve as Senator from the Big Island on the Kona side and I'm also an emergency room physician. 
My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland every Friday here on ThinkTech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kawilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. My guest today is the Dean of Hawaiian, uh, Hawaii Political Reporters and, um, you know, uh, all around very perceptive, actually you're a historian of, uh, yeah. uh, 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 you know, Hawaii. Uh, whole 50 years. Well, you you ought to at least publish your articles. <laughs> no, seriously. I think somebody could trace Hawaiian politics just by, not that we agreed, you know. No. Uh, no. But there was one thing uh, that, um, well, we, we were discussing just before we went on break, what, uh, whether or not the Trump phenomenon would increase the possibility of developing uh, a stronger Republican uh, base in Hawaii. Now, I know that's probably some of my colleagues are going to think that I'm being heretical here. But I don't, I don't think that we should use nonpartisan elections as the excuse for trying to, I mean, if you, we ought to have strong partisan, in my opinion, political opposition as well as, uh, you know, governing. Well, party. I remember that you always insisted that the best thing for a political party was a good, hard primary fight. Yes. That, because then you could, you could, Test exactly. your own moves and fa and define your own message and find out what your supporters well, are about. Well, I think, for example, nationally, look what the, I think that Bernie Sanders' campaign actually improved. Oh, definitely, uh, definitely improved definitely. Uh, definitely. Hillary Clinton's chances to be president. Definitely. You know, but I, th uh, regarding Trump, I don't think that Trump is going to do much for the Republican Party at all. I think it's going to be the opposite. I mean. You've already got uh, Ryan pulling out of, of supporting him. And, you know, uh, the poor uh, vice presidential candidate, Pence, uh, we find out in a debate yesterday that he doesn't, that Trump doesn't even know what his position is on Syria. So what kind of teamwork is that? So I think, I think party building via Donald Trump is not going to happen. Well, I think as Tip O'Neill used to say, all politics is local. Yes. And yes. what the Republicans, and again, you know, we discussed this with Beth, what they need to do is to develop an ideology that's, that's local. Yes. That's for Hawaii. Yes. You know, and uh, show that, for example, you know, if you don't like the size of government, how do we deliver services with mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. and the rest? You know, mm -hmm. otherwise... Uh, you know, we have uh, Sam Sloan clinging on to his one That's seat. One, one seat in the state and senate. And it's almost like, you know, we ought to sort of make, graduate him in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if I, can, if I can butt in and ask you a question about sure. this. What, you took a risk when you were governor and uh, pushed, pushed for a task force to start an open records law that really had some teeth in it and it turned out to be the Office of Information Practices. Uh, why did you do that? Well, <laughs> uh, because I was young and foolish and didn't know better. <laughs> you know? No, and there's some of that. Because the right thing to do, no matter what, the right thing to do is uh, to make sure that government information is the people's information. So we ought to have, and in those days it was so unclear you know, uh, mm -hmm. as to what we would release and what we wouldn't. And so this was a way of bringing clarity uh, about. And actually, you played a big pro part in it. And, uh, you know, the first thing that happened once we, we passed the, the law was all my records got... <laughs> yes, I, the first story I did after we had the open records law was to look and find out what boards and commissions were that you were on, and uh, you hadn't <laughs> registered some of them <laughs> with the state, so that was uh, probably a little unfair, but it was the first one we did. No, no but, you know, and, and those things are, I think, necessary. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
One of the, I, I'm actually disappointed, and I should tell you this, mm -hmm. you, I'm actually disappointed with where the open records law has sort of ended up. Because on one hand, it seems to me, and this is from my little experience of going back into state government and, and doing things, that um, on one hand, there is all this formality of compliance. You sit in a meeting and people are saying, well, was there enough notice? And da, right. da, 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 and all of that is important. But you ask for some documents and it seems like they have expanded the uh, exceptions. The Capitol Bureau at the Star Advertiser has got a armload of requests in for uh, documents from the state government and, and the city. Uh, and almost every one of them has uh, either been denied or ignored, or in some cases, lost. Uh, it, it's, it, it's very frustrating, the status of transparency or open government in the state of Hawaii right now. And, and what you need is some sort of a spirit somewhere that would have to come from the top, from the right. third floor, to say, hey, give it to them. Yeah, Open really. it up. Uh, uh, really. It, it, uh, truly, it, it used to be, it used to be when you asked for the details on a project. I said, I want to see the files on uh, this construction project at Kaimuki Library or whatever. Mm -hmm. What you would get, in, they would say, wait a day, let me put it together, and you would get an enormous cardboard box with everything. Here they all are, don't get them out of order, but sit down and go well, through see, them that, all. That and you don't get what, that now. That, that to me is what the law was meant to do. Right. And strategically, you know, okay, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk about from the government officials' yeah. point. Strategically, one of the best things you can do is dump all the information out right. there. Let them go do research. They're yep. going to find out how complex mm -hmm. these things are, number mm -hmm. one. And number two, it takes time and it takes effort. It's not cheap, uh, you mm -hmm. know, thing. But, but nowadays, they, everything is so reluctant, and we end up... With and it gets redacted, and somewhere, and I've lost track of exactly how it happened, but now you get charged. Your request, <laughs> your request may turn out to be... We'll give you that, but we have to redact the information, and redacting the information is going to cost ten thousand dollars. Well, see, that's that's the problem. Yeah, and that's the thing. And what the, what what is now being emphasized is uh, the idea that uh, two politicians, no more than two politicians, can talk to each other. You know, it's that kind of thing, which was all part of the spirit of this. Right, but. What it really means is that the bureaucrats now control government because they decide what gets released. Politicians can't meet. Mm -hmm. So who do you think decides mm -hmm. all these issues? And I, I really, well, you can well, get I, me Well, you know, the, the, the open meeting law and, and the, you have to have, if you have more than three uh, or a majority of you, they can't meet. Um, to me, that's always been a little bit disingenuous because uh, there are other ways you can do it. You still have you still have the internet. You still have email or Twitter or direct messaging or text messaging, and but so what's been but the control yeah. of deciding all those issues mm -hmm. now are left with the very people that yes. we were passed the law to open government. Right. Yeah. So you know, and, which by the way brings me to my uh, another concern mm -hmm. of mine. Okay, one of the great things I think about uh, Hawaii and it's the, the, the political system was the idea that we always had people like you around mm -hmm. you know the, the, you know the, the all the TV stations right you know they had uh, uh, reporters that were out in the field and, mm -hmm. then, and all of a sudden all of this is getting lost it's and winnowing it's winnowing to a tremendous degree there is there's less and less of Folks I think you might be Capitol. one of the few people left that well, actually even has some historical... The, the, well, I mean, the, the initial wisdom of the state capitol was that it would provide it for places for the press to work out of. Now, it has been swallowed. The little nest of offices down in the basement of the Capitol, which we pay for, for our office, there used to be two. There used to be the Star Bulletin and the Honolulu Advertiser. Now there's only one. There's the Star Advertiser office. The other office where I used to work out of has now become a locker room for the deputy sheriffs. 
Uh, the Associated Press has an office at the Capitol, but it's only staffed during the legislative session. See, this is why the, the open records law is going to be much more important. That's a good much point. Much more important that's a, that's in, a good in the point. future. Yes. You know, right. Because if we're going to make it so that yeah. we don't have reporters, then we ought to make it easy for the citizens to get information. Yes. Directly. That makes a lot of, that makes a lot of sense. Which, by the way, I, you know, anyway, we have a caller. Okay. We got a caller. It, all right. Well, uh, uh, what Senator Wyhey, uh, you know, you guys are talking about uh, a lack of confidence, and you're talking about people who are disenchanted, both at the federal level and also here in Hawaii. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end, this is not good. And my question is, uh, what can we do to alleviate that disenchantment? How can we bring people together again? How can we make them confident of government and feel that government is us and we are them? How, how can we do that? Well, did you hear the question? No, I could not well, hear it. Okay, but, uh, so what, what the question was, uh, how c there is a lot of disenchantment with government. Yes. People have lost confidence in yes. it on, on the mainland yes. as well as uh, in Hawaii as well. What can we do about making it, uh, uh, about restoring confidence in government? What, what helps? Well, like, as we were talking, the government's responsibility is to be much, much more transparent to bring itself out into the open. Um, for the things like the news media has to do is to uh, aggressively pursue stories and be able to devote enough time and resources to pursue those stories. Um, we don't have as many reporters as we used to. Right. Uh, that's, and that, that's a, a great problem. Um, it, it, it's something that probably is not going to be answered well, I used to feel uh, slighted because I thought mm -hmm. that you guys only wrote about me, you know, as the years <laughs> went by. And now I actually am flattered. <laughs> you know, we used later. to attend. We used to <laughs> attend all the proclamations and all those things. Hardly anyone goes to any any public meetings like that now uh, because you just don't have the people. We Which don't have the people. I was yeah. at a conference this past weekend where the, you know, the people, young people, were meeting and talking about the future of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. What do you see for the newspapers? in Hawaii 10 years from now? It's going to be very difficult for a, a, printed, a printed newspaper. In some other form, it'll, it will survive. But printed, printed newspapers, the younger people, fewer and fewer are reading, reading, um, reading them They're reading in the Twitter. Yeah. Or tweets or Twitter. whatever those yes. things are. Yes, or Instagram or, yes. or no Snapchat. Instagram, right. Yes, there are all, but it's not, there's very few people uh, who are 20 years old who are reading an actual paper newspaper, which is a, a damn shame, but that's that, that's that, the way it is. So I think, you know... My wife would agree with you, yeah. by the way. She thinks reading a book is what we ought yes. to be doing. You yes. know? But, I, okay, I, I, um, going on in that, a friend of mine mm -hmm. and yours, uh, Chuck Friedman, yes. wants to know um, what are the elements of a good communications office in the governor's office? Well, how do you have, what, what makes a good communications uh, office today? The, the, number, the number one thing that uh, Chuck had uh, when he was working up in your office were open doors. Oh. Open doors. It used to be that you would be able to stroll into Chuck's office and talk to him all day long uh, to find out what's going on. It's, it's all locked now. It's all and, and the justification is security. It, it yeah, is, it's but, all of this stuff yeah. about security. But if you ever, you, you know how big the security guards are. I wouldn't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the main thing is accessibility. Accessibility, right? open doors, and then sadly enough for political reporters, it was free coffee. <laughs> when are you going to write your book? <laughs> I'm not sure about a book. Perhaps just a column. <laughs> no, no take, a, take all the columns and combine uh -huh. it. You heard it for, first here, folks. The, 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 the new format for Richard's first book. So or maybe a blog. <laughs> <laughs> a blog. Uh -huh. Oh, fantastic. We are all getting more in. Well, folks, it's been... Uh, been really nice having you on my well, show. I appreciate Richard. it. I appreciate and it. And I uh, enjoyed this uh, reverse of roles. I'm not sure it's where I want to be, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, it's really thank been you. a pleasure me uh, talking to one of Hawaii's, or oh, Hawaii's only, uh, political dean. Thank you. Thank you.